The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Hello and welcome to another Video Games to the Max. I am your host Sean Garmer and this is episode 169 and here with me as always is Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. Well, how have things been going? Good. Got a new laptop. (laughs) I feel like it hadn't been that long since you said you got a new laptop. No, I had one. I got... I got a new one in April, uh, and it was an MSI one. Uh, I was never too happy with it. It kind of felt cheap. It had, like, a pretty bad video card in it for, like, my purposes, and some other stuff bugged me about it. And then the keyboard started failing on me. Um, Like, the L key and the down key stopped working. And I took I took it to Best Buy. I was like, "You fix it. Like I got a warranty. Like you do it." And they were like, "We don't fix MSI computers." So it's like, "All right." So they just gave me a refund. <laughs> and then you bought another MSI computer. No, I bought an ASUS. Oh. Okay. I bought a uh, GL seven hundred two model, which is. Way better than the MSI one I had. <laughs> ah. So, well, it, I mean, it's what makes it better. It's a trade-off. Like it, uh, it's missing. It doesn't have a DVD drive, which is kind of kind of a bummer for my purposes because I like watching DVDs on my computer. Um, and it has no SSD, so like booting it takes you know more time, to- like fifteen seconds or something. But it has uh. A 1070 in it, an NVIDIA GeForce 1070. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. With a gigabytes of video RAM. <laughs> the MSI one I had was a 1050, which had two. <laughs> Jeez. So I spent most of today and yesterday just downloading random Steam games and seeing how they would run. <laughs> Everything run good, I guess? Oh, Yeah. I ran, like, uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, like, on Mac settings, and no problem. <laughs> well, that's good. At least, uh, you know, your computer's going to last you a while, hopefully. No, yeah. there aren't any keys going out. Well, I mean, Best Buy fixes Asus computer, so if something does happen, I mean, they'll fix it eventually. <laughs> Well, well, let's hope for the the best and not lose any any keys this time. Yeah. So, been playing anything this week? Yeah, the two big things I would probably mention uh, is Origins. I think I I mentioned I was playing that last week, but I beat it the last time we did this podcast. It's fine. <laughs> okay, I still have some issues with it. The story is just kind of bad, I think, though. So it ne- does it ever – does it leave you in a f- spot where you feel like there's more for them to do there or do you feel like it wraps up well? Well, it wraps up really weirdly because, like, the whole premise of the game is Bayek and his wife are getting revenge on these people. And once everyone – like, once all the cult members or whoever get killed, they split up. <laughs> And it's like, what? <laughs> this is this is kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> like they both essentially start the Assassins Brotherhood, and I think Baia goes to Greece, and I his wife stays in Egypt, and that's about it. <laughs> ah, leaving the wife behind. That's 
kind of weird, but and then well, it, it, it ends, and then just like an additional hour of playing as his wife, like oh, like I think I mentioned to you, I'm like the game, like I'm, I I hit the end point, and then an hour later, like it just kept going, <laughs> and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's interesting that you, at least to let you play as his wife for a little while. Well, no, you play as her like throughout the game. Uh, there's like I think three little missions with her. That's also like where naval combat comes back into play. Like, you, like you don't play as her mainly. You're not like in a city or anything. You're just on a boat, like ramming other ships and doing like shooting them, and that's about it. And, like, the last battle is with her and, like, a guard, and that's, like, a boss fight. Okay. Does she have any, like, special... No. Huh. Actually, compared to Bayek, she kind of sucks because, like, her weapons are bad. <laughs> like, the last guy I was fighting, it was this guy with, like, a big, like, chain with, like, a hook on like, a ball on the end of it. And, like, if I was Bayek, I could just... I had a flaming sword, so I could just you know, hit him with that a few times, he'd be gone. But with her, it took a lot more time. Oh, okay. So, so, so what is the explanation for just having you play as her at the end, just to see? Uh, well, the in-game explanation is, like, the person who is in the Animus found her mummy also, and, like, her animus can run DNA from anything, so she put it in there, and it's a really hackneyed explanation. <laughs> but I guess it works. <laughs> but all, the, the wife is given so limited agency in the game that she's almost a non-character. Well, I guess their reasoning is that at least she's there better than not being there at all. I mean, she does pro- she does provide like a kind of a good emotional hook for like the main character, but I mean, she's in it for like six missions, and that's about it. Like she's and like she's always the one leaving your character. Like she's always doing it like missions for Cleopatra. So it just feels kind of weirdly like disconnected. Oh, okay. Well, hey, it's. So this. Oh, uh, go on. I had it, so like you just after finishing the story, is there a ton of stuff to do after? Well, uh, they introduced a weekly quest. Um, it was like a it's like a boss fight. You can only do it like when you're max level, where you face like an, what they call an animus glitch, but it's like a like a boss character. The bosses in this game are super weird, like. There are occasional, like, just, you know, high-powered enemies to fight, which is fine. But one of the bosses in this game is, like, a giant snake. And you're on a ship, like, on autopilot, and you're just shooting the snake with arrows. And it, like, slithers between columns and spits poison at you. And it's like, what what, is, what history is this from? Or what, what the fuck is going on here? Like... I played this. I played that mission, and I'm like, "Is this from Far Cry 3? Like, this this makes no sense." At least with the at least with that weekly mission I just talked about, like they call it a glitch. Like you are facing, I think you're facing Anubis, like the god of I think the god of death in Egypt. Yeah. And it's basically this god, like this dog looking thing in the middle right. of a desert, and he's huge. And you're just pelting him with arrows nonstop. And he's, like, summoning spectral dogs to, like, run into you and summoning, like, ghosts to fight you. And it's, like, that's dumb, but they at least say, like, this is, like, they say it's dumb or, like, they say it's a virus or a glitch. So I give it a pass. But when I am when I was facing the giant snake, I was, like... What what's hap- What is this? <laughs> so they haven't said anything about why that's there or anything. No. And after I killed it, like they were like, eh, whatever. Like it's it's one or more guy you killed. Like 
I think it was supposed to be like a representation of like one of the people who killed your son, but it made no sense to me. So I was like, whatever. Like the story, like the the crux of the story is like your son is killed and by like this group of people, right. and you kill five people and then they're like, oh, now there's another group of people for you to kill. And you kill those people, and then they're like, oh, here are the real perpetrators. And I'm like, this is the third time you're asking me to do this. I I, I don't care. Just, like, you don't have to keep saying these are the real, real people. Just say, yo, go kill these guys. Like, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's like, let me make sure I refresh all the baddies for you. Like, and they're all masked, and they have no person. I think I mentioned this last week, but they have no personality, and so it's like, well, I don't care about any of these people. <laughs> uh, I think it's kind of hard to, they're sort of the, like, the, I guess, what, the sub-bosses, or the... No, they're the main boss, like, the main boss is, like, this, I think, a Roman guy, and they're like, oh, what? Like when he's finally revealed that the bike is like, I can't believe you betrayed us. And I'm like, I don't think I've seen this person before yet in this game. Like I have, I had no clue this guy was. There's not even a flashback or anything like that. <laughs> no. And like, it's really funny at the end of the game. Like when you're getting the brotherhood like established, there's a, a group of people at, around this table and they're supposed to be like the people you helped out like during the side quest of the game and stuff. But I knew like two of them. I didn't know who any of the others were, so I was like, "All right, well, it, like the game doesn't end. Like when once you beat it, you just go back, get back dumped, dumped in the main world in the in the world." So I'm like, "Well, I guess I'll finish these side quests." <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, I mean, at least they got good news that Origins has doubled the amount of sales. Of Syndicate in the same amount of uh, time frame. So yeah. it's like the year and a half off uh, helped out there. Yeah, and I, I'll be, I guess I'll be curious what they do for next year or if they take up another break or, you know, if this goes back in another yearly schedule. I don't think I don't think they can do like another Egypt game, though. Like, I think that's done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the thing of where do they go from here? Do they go I would, even I would further think, back, or do they find well, the modern is, thing? This is already before Christ, so they can't go. <laughs> yeah, this is already this is like the first point of their what they're calling their canon. So I would I would think it, that like the next one would probably be feudal Japan because that's what fans seem to want. But they're dumb. Why is that dumb? It's uh, that that's one of those time frames that I think people really want to want to play in and not be Dynasty Warriors or even that Ghost of Tsushima game. Or... Uh, I th I think it's dumb for two different reasons. One, uh, like Chinese or Japanese history, and like let's just say Chinese. That is a long period of history to try to pick pinpoint one specific era to go into. Uh, and two, like what gameplay improvements do they make? Like, I think the reason I like Syndicate is because it was more in the future of their canon, at least. Like, I think it was like mid 1800s or like. Beginning of 1800s, maybe? One of the two. I think mid-1800s. Yeah, it so you had been if you were meeting Charles Dickens and all that. Yeah, so mid-1800s. Mid so it was still of, like, Victorian time, but it had, like, some new stuff to it, like the grappling hook or the Tesla grenade. Like, I don't really see where you get, like, if you did, like, a Japanese game or a Chinese game or even... In the, like, further past, like, it's hard to go back to, the, like, keep going, but, like, digging into that well. Like, right. I, I don't think a, I, I honestly don't think a present-day Assassin's Creed game would work either, because, like, the whole pr the pr series is predicated on, you have a hidden blade. It's like, okay, I have a gun. <laughs> which right, one is, yeah. which, which is, which of these is going to work out better for you? <laughs> 
Uh, Couldn't they just have like a blade come out of the gun? And no, say, the gun okay, just... here's my hidden blade, but now I also have a gun. No, the gun just fires hidden blades. Uh, well, I guess you could do that too. <laughs> they took the, the gun blade from Final Fantasy VIII and made it real. Uh, <laughs> no, I think like there was a World War Two section. Well, yeah, you know what? They could just take the gun blade from Final Fantasy VIII. Officially, because, you know, they did that uh, partnership, you know, for 15. Yeah. And just go, hey, here you go, play it, play with Squall's Gunblade. Like, there was a section in uh, Syndicate where it was taking place in World War Two. Like, that might be an interesting well. Uh, World War One might work. I mean, Battlefront showed that pretty well. Or Battlefield, I should say. One of the two. I can never keep those series straight Yeah, anymore. and they can go into a more intricate story. Yeah, and because you're at, you're on the ground walking around doing all that, not just in this war. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, like I guess we'll see what happens. Like I know they have they have a season pass for Origin, so that'll come out, and then they'll announce whatever Assassin's Creed game next year at E3. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how much it takes them to do that educational thing I for Assassin's Creed Origins. I think they said that was coming early next year. Like, when I say, like, January or, just, or February. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking, that maybe they do take a little bit of time off, because I'm sure that would bite into the schedule that they have to do for the next game. Yeah, but that's just education stuff. That's not, you know, killing people, so. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, uh, speaking of killing people. Yeah, the other game I've been playing was Call of Duty World War Two. <laughs> And so did you I, finally I, beat that, too? Yeah, I finished that, and it ends in a real wet fart moment. <laughs> like, I I finish it, and it ends in a concentration camp that is just, like, empty. Like, I think they tried to make it, like, a big, impact, like, impactful moment, but it, I was just, I was, like, I wasn't laughing, because, like, that's a serious thing, right. but I'm just, like, this is... So, like, why are we, like, why am I even playing this? And, like, what's the point of this at all? <laughs> I think it's sep- uh, just difficult for them to say if they'd filled that concentration camp up with people and had, like, the gas chambers and all that stuff. Can they really make that look realistic and not? Well, I think there is a scene, like, when you're walking through a barracks of, like, I want to say bodies, but they're, it's so dark in there that I didn't even know what the hell's going on. Like, one guy's like, oh, like, these are our men. Like, it worked them to death. And I'm like, this is a, like, uh, block of polygons that are kind of black-shaped. Like, I guess. <laughs> that... The one thing I'll mention about that game is it is short, but the missions are very long. So the campaign itself is like five hours, but they just make the missions take long. Yeah, the campaign is like 11 missions, I think, which isn't that long anymore. <laughs> like, I thought Infinite Warfare was like longer because you also had more stuff to do. Right. Uh and the missions are just, like, with the non-regenerating health, they're just, like, slogs. Like, I... Well, I guess I got, technically World War II was a slog as well. Yeah, but I got checkpointed once. Uh, I was on a hill, and I had to get from the hill. There were, like, two buildings on either side in, a, in this valley. And across from me was a sniper. And I had to get from my hill to hit, like, to the sniper. Like, go through one of these buildings. And fight, you know, waves of enemies in either building. And I had no health packs. And after, like, my ninth time failing that, I, I was like, this is not fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, failing something enough times, you're sitting there going, yeah, I don't really want to do this anymore. I'm just powering through. Yeah. Like, a lot of that, I play most of those games, like, Kind of just kind of running and gunning for most of it, honestly. Right. Uh, this one you can't because of the health situation. 
but that just makes it like so much slower and just not just like tedious. Yeah, I, I'm sh- yeah, because you're so used to the not having the health the way it is. Um, yeah, I'm used to like ducking behind a barrel and like letting it recharge for a few seconds, or right. you know, just doing something like that. And in this game, you can't. You have to either hope hope you find a health pack in, a, in you know in a room, or hope your one buddy's with you can give you a health pack whenever you want. And if he's not there, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> Also, so does like the it only not... really feel more authentic than say the other. What oh were God, no! Games? No, no, it doesn't See, feel that's, authentic. That's the point, though. Like, why say you're doing it to make it more authentic and make it harder for the health packs and all that stuff, and it just winds up being more annoying, and you're not really being that much more authentic. There's like a scene where, like, I mean, you get if you get shot, you just pop a health pack, and I think like, you just, you know pop right back up. Uh, like one of the last missions is like you get, I think you get shot as in like a like a story like a cinematic mission or like cinematic end, and it's like it like goes like three weeks later, and I'm like, huh? Like why didn't I just? I had four health packs. Like why didn't I just you know use one of those? Like it's like it's the same thing as like in Final Fantasy VII. Like when Ares dies, it's like well I have Phoenix down like. I could just use one of those. <laughs> that's that's the thing that I thought of too when I was first like not the first time I saw it, but I think that after I played the game again, I was like, so why can't he use a phoenix down here? Yeah, it, I, and... I guess they don't they don't strike you right through the heart. The other enemies don't, so. I well, it's just a difference. Yeah, it's just like a story convenience thing. But the only other thing I'll say about the game uh, is I really hate how they dole out the weapons. I think I, t- I talked to you about this on Facebook, but you start off with like two of the most garbage weapons in the game for every, for almost every mission. And you know, for every like let's just get Call of Duty game, like you throw the weapons away and you pick up like weapons you like or that you're used to and. You finish the mission with those weapons, and then when the next mission starts up, you have the same crappy weapons, and it's like this is this is not fun. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I would rather take two sniper rifles, for like for you know, and just dust everyone with those because the pistol is completely worthless, and the bolt action rifle, like you know, they start you off with is like not much better. <laughs> Do you feel like you eventually get better weapons, though, that you believe no. you want to use? The last mission, you start, you start the bolt action rifle. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> like, the the first thing you do is you kill one guy with, the, like, one German soldier, and, you know, you throw it away and, you know, use whatever, he's, whatever he was packing. <laughs> so you play the zombies yet? Actually, I did. I, try, I tried uh, the first mission. It was fine. Like, I played David Tennant. <laughs> Hey, that's the that's the best reason to play. You play David too. Yeah. Uh, the. I mean, it's, it's it's goofy, and I don't like zombies, or I don't like the mission type. You know, that mission or that mode at all. So. Are you gonna play the rest of it? Uh, I'll try to at least beat the first mission because I died. Like, they they don't tell you what to do in that like in that mode at all. So. For ten minutes, I was running around, and then I realized I had to like power up these gas valves. And I'm like, I was on like wave thirteen when I finally realized that. So when the next wave started, like dozens of zombies popped out, and they were all hard, harder varieties. And I was like, you know, had I known I had to turn these gas valves, I would have done this five minutes ago. <laughs> Isn't the point though for you to try to figure it out? Uh. It not like not in the past, I don't think. It was just kind of survival or see how long it can last. Ah, okay. So, but I I thought there was objectives or whatever this time. I mean, there was, but it was also it was also just really like. Well, this one also has it too, but it was also pretty just goofy. Like this one has like 
like you get a nuke power up if you kill a zombie, and if you you know if you get it, all the zombies are just destroyed for that wave, and it's like, okay. <laughs> Well, this gives me the more time to figure out what I'm supposed to do now. Yeah, I'm just, like, following these, like, cables, like, through this, like, door that I have to, like, open. It's like, all right, I finally figured this out. Do you just play with randoms? I just play by myself. Oh, you play by yourself? Okay. I don't like playing that game with people at all. (laughs) Yeah, I wondered... If you if it forces you to play with people or not, so it's... no, you can just play by yourself. I think the last one did that too. So, I mean, it would be easier with more, more people, but you also have to, also have to subject yourself to like voice chat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine with uh, some people getting pissed that hey, why are you going over here? Yeah, like, uh, and also Call of Duty uh, World War Two also in three days. Doubled the sales of Infinite Warfare. Yeah, I I view that as de- like depressing. <laughs> uh, I think it's the nostalgia. Yeah, because there hasn't been there hasn't been a World War like a good World War Two game since Call of Duty Two. <laughs> Although I've heard people talking about it, saying that they don't really think that it's much better from the last World War Two Call of Duty. Either. It's, I would say it's actually demonstrably worse. <laughs> like, I mean, it's better on the visual front, obviously, but right, yeah. the Call of Duty Two had like multiple viewpoints. Like, here's the Russian campaign, or here's the U. I think there's U.S., Russian, and I think French. Whereas in Call of Duty Two, and they all met up. Like, the last mission, I all had them like meet up. I want to say. Oh, that's kind of cool. This one just has like U.S. And there's there is one mission where you are like are a French woman, woman uh, and that's probably the best mission in the game, I think, even though it's like a bad stealth mission. But this this is just like so very like overtly patriotic, I would say. Yeah, well, at least they pick the right sort of time frame to have it come out since. We're, we technically started recording this on Veterans Day. Yeah. So, no, it's not. But, yeah, uh, I do want to say uh, happy Veterans Day to all those that serve, and to my grandpa as well. May he rest in peace. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so does that make you th- wish that – I know we both enjoyed uh, the first Advanced Warfare and to hear Sledgehammer say that they wanted to make the second one. Does that make well, you feel like you wish for that? They obviously wouldn't, wouldn't have made it with Kevin Spacey. <laughs> no, well, not. No, that's, yeah. He would have been, uh, well. Depending well, he on died. The... He died in the first one also. So, yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. Even if they brought but, him back, the game would have been out. Or I don't think they would have been able to do what they did with the what they're doing with the movie with this. Yeah. Because it's already, ooh, they would have had a problem. He, It'll be like it'd be like cyber Kevin, like like a robotic Kevin Spacey. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh. Yeah. I, I would. I mean, between like I'd much prefer Advanced Warfare too. Like, I would say ditch the naval crap or the uh, spaceship crap that Infinite Warfare had. Cause, I mean, I liked it, but not a lot. Of, not no one else did apparently. So. Right. Uh. I would actually say have it be open world or like the, the thing I liked about infinite warfare was you had the, like a deck of 52, like just from like the mercenaries game where you had sp- specific targets to kill. Or I think you could, I think you just had to kill them. Uh, like that'd be cool in a mission. If you had to like look out for sp- like specific soldiers and you could either like take them alive or take them dead and, get money from them yeah i mean it it would be interesting to see them do something different uh and and just be able to iterate more on that but alas now uh who's next infinity war uh yeah so 
look for nothing. <laughs> Modern Warfare 5. There. If they did that, I think people would riot. <laughs> <laughs> the the other one is the one that does uh, Black Ops, right? Not yeah, Treyarch. The, yeah. So like well, they're not doing they're not doing Infinite Warfare too. I can tell you that. <laughs> no, definitely not. After uh, what happened with the first one, so well. Also, there is a uh, air like a airplane mission in World War in Call of Duty World War Two. Well, that makes sense. That that, that is like direct it's it controls exactly the same as the spaceship stuff in Infinite Warfare. Except you're flying a more World War Two plane. Yeah, but it controls the same. <laughs> That's yeah. Well, there you go <laughs> for their not authenticity there. Once again. Yeah. But hey, it's Activision. They can get away with that stuff. Oh, you know, we go from one shooting franchise to the next because EA has bought Respawn Entertainment, who, of course, are most famous for making the Titanfall franchise. And they officially basically announced that Titanfall 3 is happening. Uh, So that's a positive. I enjoy Titanfall 2. And uh, I know you did. Did you play it? I know you. Oh did. yeah, I played it. And yeah. I beat it. Yeah. Had one of the better story modes in in these kind of games. And then there's a third person Star Wars game that they're making and a VR game uh, as well. The whole deal's worth about like 445 million, uh, but they only. They paid three hundred fifteen million for respawn. Uh, that's divvied up between cash and equity, and there's also a one hundred forty million possibility in incentives. Basically, that if they hit certain milestones, EA will get more money. So the thing is, this kind of looks bad considering you know you just shut down Visceral. But there's also reports out there that thinking that they could buy Respawn was possibly one of the reasons why they shut Visceral down. Uh, also, they had first a right refusal for Respawn, and there was people already sniffing around trying to buy them. So he just said, well, we're going to stop that, and uh, we'll buy you. So what do you think? Uh, uh... I view this as a bad bad thing for respawn. <laughs> like I think I was talking about it with you, but I'm going to give this like five years before EA shuts them down. <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't be too out of the question. They have shut down. I think the most studios out of anybody. And... Like I, I think the I think the timeline is going to be like Titanfall three comes out. It doesn't meet whatever like insane sales effect figures that EA wants and. That'll be it. <laughs> Probably. I, I think it depends on if it does well enough and they wait until the PlayStation 5 and whatever the heck Xbox is going to name their system uh, come out and see if they can push out a Titanfall 4 or something like that. And then if that doesn't do well, they'll shut it down. Yeah, but that'd be about five years. <laughs> I mean, you aren't wrong because uh, <laughs> Ubisoft themselves are saying that expect in like two or three years that we'll be hearing about PS5 and Xbox, whatever, if not basically about to be released. Yeah. Uh, by then. So oh, I, I'm not looking forward to that. I'm having to buy <laughs> I know it happens, but it's just like, again, having to go through the buying all this stuff. So, And the uh, VR project's apparently for the Rift right now. It's not does not say anything about Vive or PSVR. So uh, that's all we know about it. We don't, there's not really anything else on it. And the Star Wars project is what it is. So at least they have games in development. 
and that's that's about it right now for respawn. Yeah, I I guess it'll be interesting because I know uh, Zampella. I think he's the one who retired already from respawn. Like I'm right. I think I think it'll be interesting to see how long West stays around. Uh because I know he wrote that. I know he said like nothing's going to change, but that'll last like three months and then things will change. <laughs> they always say that. And then you start, yeah. hearing, Oh, this guy got laid off. This guy left. Uh, he didn't like the way they were running things, blah, blah. blah. That's yeah. It, it never goes the way that they say it's going to. With, with these yep. Things. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll see what happens, but I, I look at this as a, pretty bad thing for respawn (laughs) well speaking of bad this can't be a good thing oh they're trying to say that it is but obviously whenever the next franchise after batman and i think guardians of the galaxy just wrapped up yep comes out telltale has laid off 90 people uh 25 percent of their staff uh, they are reorganizing the company, and they're going to use this restructuring or reorganizing uh, to move internal development over to more proven technologies that will fast-track innovation in its core products as it works with new partners to bring its games to new audiences. So it's apparently not stopping making any of the things that nobody has in development, but it's supposedly going to make it work better. Uh, well, I feel like you should have had your engine working better like a while ago, but whatever it takes, I guess. Uh, I like their reasoning. Reasoning seems very shady to me. Like you just said, like you can forgive like The Walking Dead season one, or maybe even like some of the games after, like because that that game came out in twenty twelve. Once you got to Walking Dead Season 2, that should have been fixed. Yeah. And it's, like, it's not. And it's running on the same, like, garbage engine. Or, I mean, the engine was great, like, you know, five years ago. But it still has bugs. It's, like, the performance is, has gotten worse on better consoles. Which is frightening when you really think about it. Like... Quit making like I understand like you need to maybe you need to have like four games in development like that's crazy, but if you think that that's fine, but make the engine work better first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I don't know. I feel like that's really weird to say that you're laying off people in order so that you can improve the game. Yeah, okay, like, what what technology are you going to move to, like, Unity or, like, Unreal Engine? Like, what are they doing? I like, know. No, but it's just, like, so you need less people to make your games better? I don't... Yeah. This feels more like, well, we don't want to say anything that could scare people off from making any deals with us, so let's just say this and, you know, hopefully nobody really talks about it because we're Telltale and... I yeah. I don't think they would say it, but I actually think, like, Life is Strange kind of freaked them out when it came out. <laughs> I think that did also just because it took their formula and did something different with it. Well, they took their formula, they made it work better, and I don't know about you, but I never had any issue, I didn't, I never had any issue with Life is Strange, like, on a technical front. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't either. Um, and it and, also... Told I don't a know any, better story. Yeah, I don't know anyone else who did either. I mean, it's not like every episode of even now when like when Telltale releases a game, like there are threads on forums that are like it erased my save game or it can't find it, and it's like well, I mean, this is Square Enix making sure it runs probably on Unreal. Or, no, no, I'm talking about Telltale, not. Not, don't not. Well, what not I'm like, saying, like, the reason why Life is Strange runs well is because Square Enix is getting to use 
a much better engine. They don't they don't have any experience of using like Telltale has the excuse of saying, okay, well we've had to use this engine for all of our games. Why are we going to no, make you, a new one for? Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. that's the point. Is they aren't like they just never bothered to upgrade their engine or fix right. these problems. Like you just said, we have to use this engine. I was like, no, we don't. Like we could make could make a new one or we can make a better one, but they're just lazy. <laughs> But I think they're they don't really have an excuse anymore because okay now you've laid people off, that money that you're getting which, I guess for them perhaps is, okay well this money that we're getting is allowing us to not only pay these people but allow us to keep making, the games with the next deal, I don't know how that's working for them but you would think that that gives them enough money to be able to upgrade the engine at some point. You'd think that, but we're eight games deep and nope. <laughs> eh, the way that, you know, games are going now where, and we'll, we'll talk about what, what uh, take two is doing. It's no surprise that that's happening because these games are getting more and more expensive yeah. uh, to do. And then you're dealing with licenses and stuff like that. I'm sure that costs them a pretty penny as well. So I, feel I would bad like it if people. like, It'd be nice if Telltale actually made like an original game, but I don't think that'll ever ever, ever happen. Yeah, pretty from the very beginning, they've used license of something. So, yeah, I, I don't see them changing that unless somebody makes them do it. Like the people just stop buying the games. I, no, I think they made. Let me check. No, they made Puzzle Agent. That was original. How long ago was that? Uh, seven years. <laughs> if, well, there you go. 2010. Jeez. Yeah. I, f- I feel so long ago at this point. <laughs> uh, so. Like, uh, Walking Walking Dead came out in 20, 2012. Like, so that was five, yeah, it was five yeah, years five ago. Yeah, five years ago. So. Yeah. Wow. Like, all their games have run on those, like, run on that engine, and most of them have been fucked up in one way or the other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, again, uh, like may- I just maybe assume not, that they're maybe- not getting the big sales they were getting. Well, yeah, they diluted themselves too much. Like they have, four, they had four games this year. It's like no wonder, like people can't keep track of that shit. Like I don't, I don't know about you. I don't know anyone who played The Walking Dead season three. No, I or played. New- I bought the first two episodes and then I never played. Them. Yeah, or like, like it barely even like made a blip. And same with like Guardians of the Galaxy, like that just ended five days ago, and I think I saw like one review of it, and that was about it. Yeah, and they they just released a Walking Dead collection, yeah, or whatever too. So they keep re-releasing this stuff. Uh, yeah, so they're probably catching people still that are buying it, so. But I, I just hope that this means we're still getting Wolf Among Us too. I'd hate to see that not happen. Yeah, that, that's supposed to be due out next year. Better still be making it Telltale. We've been waiting for that one. The one that you actually might get right. Oh, what people aren't clamoring for Game of Thrones Season 2? <laughs> oh, God. That was probably one yeah. of the worst ones. If not the worst. Yeah. Uh, just it, that's the one that like just didn't make any sense uh, at all for them to do, but thankfully they recovered with uh, Tilson in the Borderlands after that, so they didn't have to uh, dwell on it too much. Actually, Borderlands came out first. <laughs> they came out at the same time, like yeah. they they kept going back and forth or whatever. Uh, but yeah, still uh, they were fortunate to have one that worked and and one that didn't. The, I mean, we talk about studio stuff. Now we talk about a total surprise for me because I understand that, you know, they've got the, the Beast movies and and all that stuff going on to kind of keep the franchise going. And uh, now there's, they, they announced that there's a whole Harry Potter games division that's going to be made. Uh, and they're going to make mobile games and games for Harry Potter. And now there's a... Uh, Niantic is making a Harry Potter AR game. 
uh, called Wizards Unite, where you get to go around as a wizard and gather power-ups and explore places and all that. I, they had to come out and tell everybody that we're still fully committed to Pokemon Go, because they were worried about that. But it's just no, like, it, this it, seems it'd really be weird. It'd be funny if the Pokemon license just ended and it just turned into Wizards United. <laughs> I mean, I know like, there's I, a lot of people like Harry Potter, but I I think the like I think it'll might it'll do okay, but I don't think it'll have the like mass market appeal that Pokemon Go did, or like that cultural zeitgeist. No, I think this is something like Harry Potter fans that play games on mobile might actually. Go check out, and then that's it. Like, yeah. I know she's still around writing things and, and all that stuff, but I don't know. I, again, like, I, I think that the movie did really pretty well, right? The the Fantastic Beasts and the yeah, whatever. Yeah, it did okay, yeah. So, and, you know, that's a whole five movies, or whatever the heck that was supposed to be. I never was talking about it on here once. Yeah. That they... It went from a trilogy to, like, another bunch of movies, and... How much blood can we squeeze out of the stone? <laughs> I'd say, well, I think it's because J.K. Rowling figured out pretty quick that, like, whatever she wrote that wasn't tied to that, people didn't care. So... If, if only Tolkien yeah. had realized that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, then he passed, and... They stopped. <laughs> he was he was a hundred years behind the curve. He should have been writing like eighteen Hobbit books, so WB can make movies out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, right. God, could you imagine Peter Jackson still making the Hobbit like fifteen? Yeah. Or he would have split it into thirty movies because you know he can. <laughs> Why not at that point? I don't know. I, I don't want to hate on this. I'm not a Harry Potter person. I watch all the movies. I never read the books, but... The movies are fine, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, more power to them for continuing to try to make money. I mean, it'll probably be better than most of those EA games. <laughs> you aren't wrong, but will it beat these... The frickin' Turtles coming to Injustice 2? Now I almost won Injustice 2 because the Turtles are on them. Uh, so not only did the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which it seemed like they're going to have them all fight as a group. Yeah, it's. I saw the tra- I don't know if you saw the trailer for that. Right. That, uh, they're, they announced the Atom, uh, Enchantress, and the Turtles. And I'm unclear if it's going to be like all four Turtles at once. Right, because like Raph tries to, he throws his dagger down, or the, yeah, whatever, the, that side. thing, the, the side down, and, and then they go, oh, hold on, Raph, we do this all together. Yeah, but that was my, yeah Lee, I think Leo told Mikey that, and it's like, oh, so how does that work from a gameplay perspective? Like, do you, do you pick one turtle to start with, or, like, what do you do? Or is it just all going to be all four of them? Like, you, you never know. That's It'd be what cool it if it was that. Like. <laughs> I'll, I'll much prefer that option. Like, if it could just fight, like, Donatello versus Hellboy. <laughs> I think it's not them as single characters. I think it's them as the unit. Yeah, so it's like going to be like the Pokemon trainer from, like, Smash Brothers or something. Right, something like that. Or, like, even in uh, Heroes of the Storm, they had the Lost Vikings all fight together. Yeah. So it's... I think it was a fighting game that's like four against one. That's a little weird, but I'm sure they'll make it work. It's it's not one of the best games of the year for a reason. To, or, I mean, or it is one of the best games for, of the year for a reason because NetherRealm, NetherRealm usually does pretty well with this figuring it out. I mean, I would say if this year is the best fighting game. It's between that and Tekken 7, certainly. No one's saying Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. <laughs> I'm pretty. Sh- I will be very surprised. I I would think that they put them in the category because it's not a lot of fighting games. But yeah. Like if and, anybody and has Cap- them winning. And Capcom tends to like. I think they pay to be in those types of categories, or they have in the past. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Like when the video game awards show up, 
Yeah. It's, that's in a month it, from now. It'll be like the best fighting games. It'll be like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, uh, Street Fighter Five Season 3 or 2 or whatever the fuck it's on, Tekken 7, and then like Injustice won't be on there for some strange reason. Uh, they'll have like, Killer Instinct whatever season they're on instead of Injustice. Yeah. yeah. And that'll validate that Marvel vs. Capcom winning or something. Yep. And it's like, yeah, you gotta be kidding me. Come on now. Uh, the Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 2 had a uh, direct. It was about 15 minutes long. They detailed the expansion pass, which it's nice to see that Nintendo's doing a whole expansion pass for this. Uh, you get support items from the beginning. Then you get uh, new quests, a rare blade, which the blades are basically the extra characters, and they allow you to have uh, the moves that you have in the game and, and whatnot, a battle mode, and then a brand new story as well. So I'm guessing that's the expansion part that you get a year from now. But, you know, it's that whole games of service continuing on with uh, even Nintendo. We've seen it with Zelda. It's like this is going to happen. You get a if you if you play Zelda right now, you can complete this quest that allows you to get the uh, the main character from Xenoblade his suit or whatever. Which I don't know that I would want Link wearing that, but you know, hey, whatever works, right? Um, what do you think? I mean, this really shows that this stuff is serious now, right? If Nintendo's doing it, I'd ima- I wouldn't be surprised at all if they announced DLC for Mario. Like, Is there even an option for it, though? They can add more worlds, I guess. Because there is an endgame part that happens after the game ends. So they could just add more stuff for you to do. But, you know. It, this is sure. <laughs> I just really feel like people need to get ready for this. You're constantly having to think about you're going to be they're going to be getting you to pay more and more and more uh, for these games. So as long like as long as the game prices remain the same, like the opening price, because if it goes to seventy dollars, that's fine. And as long as you like you feel like supporting the game and it's a complete package to start off with, then I would say it's fine. You know, I worry that by the time we get to PlayStation five and Xbox, whatever, that they might pull the trigger and say, okay, games are now $70 because I would, I would think that at some point those loot box (laughs) wells and all that stuff dries up and they, run out of ideas for how to get more money out of you. That may happen. I would say if if that's the case, I think games need to scale back. Like, like, you know, the diehard graphics fans might not want that, but like, unless you're willing to pay for it, most people, I mean, most people aren't either. So. I mean, with the, everything being going towards digital they could do that right where they release a okay well here's the super ultra 4k whatever version uh, i mean by then i i wouldn't be surprised i mean they'd still have to support i think even in two years you're still gonna have to support 1080p so they could come out with okay we're gonna give you the 60 dollar one that's only for 1080p tvs and uh, it still looks really good, but if you want to get the Super 4K whatever one, then you pay 70 And that's how they get you, is you pay $10 for the graphical upgrade or something. Uh, I mean, game. some games have already done that already. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you're right about that. There's several games that have done that already, or they just you know, release another version and say, okay, yeah. here's this. Uh, so, I know, I just feel like it's inevitable, but it, this doesn't, uh, if you're one of these people that really hates this idea of everything going towards this, 
get ready because uh, Take Two, which you know, let's not kid ourselves. Like Grand Theft Auto is existing because they have Grand Theft Auto Online, and Take Two's already said that there's going to be a Red Dead Online, and so they pretty much just came out straightforward and said, uh, not only are we working on Red Dead. Redemption 2. We're also working on another unannounced game, which <sighs> Borderlands 3. <sighs> and because it, it's, I don't care what people keep saying, it's not Bioshock, whatever the next Bioshock thing is. I just can't. How are you going to add microtransactions to that game? Every plasmid uh, costs five bucks. <laughs> so. They are basically saying that every game that comes out from Take Two will have some kind of microtransactions. And, well, at least you're being honest. Like, that, I think that system is fine for, like, GTA or even, like, their NBA games. But, like, what do you do for that for, like, Red Dead? Because even if you think that, like, even if, like, GTA Online is just copied, like, feature for feature into, like, Red Dead, like, you don't have cars. You can't customize a fucking horse that much. You can't attach, like, spinning rims on a horse. <laughs> You're gonna, uh, put different horseshoes it'll be like horse. It'll be like Horse Armor 2.0 or something. Um, yeah. Like... That world can somewhat support, like micro can like buy new, like a buy a new outfit for your guy, or buy yeah. this high like high powered weapon or something. But at a certain point, you reach a limit with like Western technology or like Western, you know, regalia. Like you're not gonna have a helicopter, you know, a helicopter or an airplane, and you know. Blackwater, or, you know, Mexico, or where the fuck this game is taking place in. <laughs> Do they make it like Shadow of War, where you can recruit people no, I don't, to your side, no. or something like that, you know? I doubt that. I doubt that. Like, if you want to play by yourself, you can have AI people that you can purchase, or something. I, don't, I mean, you're right about that, in that because of the limitations of the technology at the time, how far can they really go? Yeah. With that, you know, like I think GTA online works well because it offers, it's a heightened sense, but it offers a sense of realism of like, you know, ne like here and now. Right. Right. So and it's the same thing with like the Sims. Like that's why people, not maybe not so much anymore, but that's why so many people got hooked on The Sims when it first came out. Is because you know, it's like I'm, you know my little virtual character. I can build him a house or have her fall in love or do whatever. And this kind of same thing with GTA Online, and it'll be the same thing to an extent with Red Dead Online. But it'll be cowboys, <laughs> like so that will inherently not be as interesting to some people. Yeah, you'll go steal someone's horse. And then you, hey, we're going to do the Robin Hood mission where we take from the guy that collects the taxes or something and yeah, give it, you know, give it back to our group. Or I'd be like, like the only thing I can think of is like you buy land in the, in the game and you like build a, you know, build a farm on it or something and become some like get over if you're farm bill. <laughs> Red Dead Farming. You actually have to hire people. Wanted. You have to hire people in game to actually, to actually like work the fields. <laughs> yeah, no, and that, that's how they'll get you. They'll they'll have you pay for the uh, you know the extra horses and any kind of equipment that you need for that. Yeah. Uh, th there's probably some ways we're not thinking of, but yes, I mean you got to think about that how limited they could be on the technology unless they just want to say, eh, it's an extra mode, who cares? But knowing them, uh, they won't. But they'll make it work because they're rock star and, and it's what they do. 
but you know everybody that's mad about EA and and all the other companies just get ready. It's just how it's going to be. Uh, Sony has announced that PSX is going to happen. At least the press conference is Friday, December eighth at eleven p.m. Eastern. Good lord. So I'm making it convenient for most people. <laughs> uh, well, nice for the people that are there, right? 8 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. Uh, everybody else that's, you know, suppo- you know, reporting on this from outside that conference, uh, the, the convention center in Anaheim, well, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> Late night for you. Uh, so you have that issue. Uh, but I'm sure there'll be surprises and, and other things. They do say that you'll, you're going to get an update from uh, the media molecule that are making dreams, and we'll get more on Ghost of uh, Tsushima as well, so interested to hear about both of those. It feels like it's been forever with dreams, so that's good. I'm sure we'll hear more about Days Gone and a few other things. Any games that you want to see them announce? We haven't heard from in a while or trying to think another medieval game I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a Jack and Daxter remaster or something like that I wouldn't mind like another Ratchet and Clank <laughs> that would be nice yeah to see that uh, I like I, Crash I, Team Racing uh, like that remake of Ratchet, or you know that reboot or whatever the fuck they call that Ratchet and Clank that came out last year. Like that was the first actual Ratchet and Clank game I ever got into. Yeah, that was really good. People enjoyed it, and like it's really an homage to the the original games, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't know how many more. Like I guess they could release Pat upon two and three. I don't know how many more of those like PS one classic. Sony games that they have that they want to release. I mean, yeah, uh, they're not going to put the time into like keep fixing them. So I mean, at a certain point, it's just kind of a lost cause. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't know if we'll have another Windjammers to show up for that, right? Well, Giant Bomb has to get like interested in another Neo Geo game first, and then we'll get another Windjammers type <laughs> of situation. <laughs> At the rate that they're releasing Neo Geo games for the systems, though, right now, maybe they'll have well, them all covered by then. We'll get. We'll finally get a PS4 version of Money Puzzle Exchanger. <laughs> That's what everybody uh, wanted. But they, you know, who knows? They might uh, give us more information on this whole thing about Sony, at least in the U.S., allowing you to trade in your trophies for point credits on the PlayStation Store. Or not point credits, dollar credits. Uh, so every a thousand points is like ten dollars, and if you get ten platinum trophies, you can get a thousand points. You get a hundred silver trophies, a hundred points, and twenty-five gold trophies, two hundred fifty points. So does this encourage you to get more trophies? Uh, no, because the only trophy I have is for the Order 1886, because it takes two hours to get all the trophies in that game. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, wouldn't you want to not have to pay full price for your game? If you yes, can... but it's, you're, you're knocking off, like, $2 <laughs> for 25 gold trophies. Like, it's such an inconsequential number that... I'd rather just have them. <laughs> yeah, I think you might be able to buy, like, if you're really good at trophies. I mean, like, see, I just don't, like, even if you buy a lot of games, right? If you if you platinum everything that you've played already, maybe. Like, let's say that you just got a PS4 now. How many, how many trophies you'd have to have? Yeah. Uh, you, how many games you have to buy to to be able to get anything out of this? I mean, I I guess it's a nice idea, right? It's a nice novelty thing, but I don't think it's yeah. going to make this huge difference. Or, I mean, if the values were increased, like if it was like trading your tro 
your platinum trophy and get ten dollars. That'd be one thing. Right. Because I, I might actually do that and be like, "Fuck the order!" I'm like, let's get these trophies, but let's get this. Let's get this money. But like, the, like the values are like the value proposition is kind of insane. Yeah, it's it really feels like you're grasping at straws on, on that one. Like, if you really feel like this is gonna happen for you, I, I highly doubt it. Honestly, and, and it'd be and it'd be nice. Honestly, like if they were serious about the system, if it was just implemented in the like the system like the system software like right now yeah like, like they should have had that in you know a few updates ago like you just turn it on one day and you go and it, help, it goes like oh you have you have 100 gold trophies here's five dollars in psn store credit like all right that, that would incentivize me to get more or to, you know to play the system more or something not to go on like sony's reward you know site and sign up for this crap and then having you know having to buy it there <laughs> yeah it, that uh, would help me a lot on, on that uh just before we uh move on here to not talking about game stuff uh, the hulu app works pretty well on the switch uh, that's the first video app that's been put on the switch apparently i was listening to uh a uh, interview on Nintendo Voice Chat. They interviewed the guy that that he actually went from making games for the Super Nintendo. Uh, he made he was part of the development team that made the Rogue Squadron Wii that never came out, and he's actually gone from there to doing the video apps. Uh, so he did like Hulu, Netflix, all that stuff on Wii and Wii U and 3DS, and now so he he did the Hulu for. Uh, Switch. He said no comment when asked about Netflix. So I'm pretty sure that means that that's coming. Two weeks from now, yeah. <laughs> at some point, uh, I'm pretty sure YouTube will be on there and Amazon. Aside from that, I'd be surprised to see what shows up because that's the extent of what we got on the 3DS for the lifespan of the entire thing. And I don't remember the Wii U getting a lot of apps either. So it'd be interesting to see if because this is portable, if, if we see a lot more come to the Switch, but. Uh, yeah, well, it, well, it works. What are fine. some other ones you'd want, like Crunchyroll or? Yeah, Crunchyroll and you know WWE would be nice. Uh, you know, because I could watch the pay per view or something and and watch something on my TV instead of having to use the PS4 uh, or drain battery out of my phone, which would be nice not to have to do either. Uh, so yeah, I think aside from that, I mean. I don't, I don't know how many, like, you know, I don't think any of the other stuff that's sort of like regions, like, I don't know that we, you'd get like the sports stuff to come over, but no, it would be like cool eight. for like uh game pass if it came, cause I use it for the football podcast, but I doubt that would happen. Or even that's like HBO go or something. I wonder, I, I mean, they've, you know, they just came out with doom this week. So the adult material stuff probably wouldn't be a, Hendrix yeah. like it would have before. Uh, the it, the video game uh, actor strike is over, finally. The voice actor strike. We talked about it, basically, the deal being set, but they hadn't signed anything. Uh, so now they have officially signed. Uh, basically, the, the negotiating committee is saying that the bonus payments we asked for are now part of the video game industry and are our base in which to build upon. Uh, they now have an agreement until 2020, so that's good. And glad, glad to know we will we'll get uh, maybe Chloe will come back in the next life is strange. Or so. We'll see. <laughs> so the big news, sort of in the entertainment side, uh, this week was this. Like it wasn't necessarily a rumor; it was that there was a thing going around of Disney was talking to Fox about buying their TV and movie properties. Uh, Now, they they cannot merge with Fox itself because that's against the FCC. Uh, And Fox would still keep their sports because basically Disney would probably go into some kind of extreme debt if they took on Fox's sports because they can barely deal with ESPN's sports yeah uh, they're they're having to lay off a hundred more people already and also it's 
probably wouldn't pass because of the anti-competitive uh, thing. It's just like uh, AT&T, they're not letting AT&T get Time Warner without selling DirecTV or selling CNN. Uh, so, you know, it would be the same thing here. So f- Disney would get like 20th Century Fox, Fox Searchlight, and they would get X-Men and Fantastic Four and Deadpool back uh, to Marvel. So that would be cool. Um, I, I think Fox is for the most part done okay. Like I enjoy The Gifted. I don't know about do, – do you like it? Do you no, I watched one episode and it seemed kind of low budget to me. Yes, <laughs> it certainly is low budget. Yeah, and like I like, I think it's Amy Acker on it, but that's kind of about it. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like I've seen the the girl in several movies. I don't remember. Blink or. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The blonde, the blonde like daughter. Oh, okay. Um, no. And she's, then no. the yeah, the main girl that's. So I don't remember these actors' names uh, right now. Yeah. But the the main girl that was in jail for a while. Polaris. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember her from some other stuff, but you know, I feel like the cast is fine. Uh, it's. I've never. I've need to sit down and watch Legion. I've never watched that. Uh, to yeah, that. that's that's way better. <laughs> Trust me on that. This that one. <laughs> and the movies have been, you know, up and down. Uh, you know, Fantastic Four has been garbage, but you know, well, what do you do? You can't win them all. And Deadpool has been great. So uh, it, to get a get for Fantastic Four, could just get Alba back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they would also get Avatar. Uh, not that I care. I fell asleep watching the first one. Uh, so, it, you know, they already have an Avatar thing at Disney, so that'd be good for them. It'd be really weird to say that Disney would then own also Family Guy and 24 and several of the well, other I, ones. I'd have to deal with for, for Fox to own that stuff still. like Or... No, uh, Disney would reportedly own Fox's TV studio. Oh, okay. And its productions like Family Guy 24. And, oh. Yeah. So, did, no, Fox would own the channel. Yeah. So, like, I'm sure that they would keep everything running on Fox. Like, no big deal. Just Disney, I guess, could decide if they want to cancel it. Or if they want to do 10 more seasons of 24, I guess they can decide to do that, too. But, uh... It looks like the deal's not done. They can keep talking if they want, but right now uh, it's kind of been quieted down for the most part. It was exciting for like a day and a half, and then reality set in. (laughs) And like that for me would be the only thing is that, okay, well, now you could get Deadpool and X-Men and all them into the MCU. Um my 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 question is like how do you do that like because it's been ten years since like Iron Man came out like that is well aren't they sort of restarting everything after Infinity War? You kind like they say they are, but who knows how far they'll go? <laughs> like that would sort of be that perfect spot where you could put them Maybe. if they wanted to. Yeah. So, I think it's possible they'll figure out how to do it. Um, they put Spider Man in there, so yeah that that Inhuman series just ended like yes like last night. <laughs> um, I haven't watched an episode, and I feel like no, I haven't no, missed anything. No, no one did. You're not alone there. <laughs> Are they going to cancel it though? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I know people were calling for Agents of Shield to get canceled for a while, and they didn't. So that got that got better. Like in humans, never did. <laughs> well, it's true. Yeah, they they it did uh, did get better. I never caught up with it at some point. Maybe I will. But uh, so also uh, Disney stayed in the news because whenever we talked about Disney doing their streaming service, one of the things that they were not going to do 
was remove the Marvel Netflix shows, and apparently now they actually might. Uh, so probably because this Fox deal went through, because we got to think about this too, this Fox deal would have also really helped their streaming service have content. Uh, yeah. They probably would have been able to justify them even charging, you know, ten dollars more, you know, because CBS charges I think like seven dollars uh, for their thing, and I would assume that if Disney would have gotten the Fox content, they probably would have been able to charge like at least fifteen dollars uh, if they yeah, don't already charge fifteen dollars already. So. They've actually said that uh, their their streaming thing is going to be lower than Netflix. They think they actually said substantially lower. Oh, that's interesting. Um, especially considering that they're going to make original shows, too. Like, I guess it's okay to start at that price, but I feel like once these original shows start coming out, just like Netflix, they're going to start bumping up the price real, real small, you know, slowly. Uh, because, you know, after uh, Punisher, any Netflix Marvel series or whatever that you're used to seeing on Netflix will then be made only for that Disney streaming service. So if there's a season two of Jessica Jones, uh, you know, season three of Daredevil, you know, season two of the other two, uh, season no, two of Defenders. I, no, I, I think the deal is that Netflix would keep those shows, but like the Disney streaming thing would like, they'd make their own new ones. Cause like they can't, I mean, they can't take, like, Jessica Jones away from Netflix. They make it. <laughs> it's theirs. <laughs> uh, I don't... Well, like... I don't know like if that means that they can't license having that and then go on and make a season three and say, okay, well, Netflix has nothing to do with this. I mean, and... eventually, I would assume the, ne- the license will expire, but then in that case, you have to, like rehire Christian Redder for, you know, season eight of Jessica Jones or for however, however long that series lasts. And same thing with like Mike Coulter for Iron Fist and all the other guys. Yeah. And also like, I think like it's such a, I mean, I, like I love Jessica Jones and like Daredevil and like the Punisher looks great, but there was, oh, are such small potatoes in like, Assuming Disney gets this like streaming thing correct, they can make you know eight thousand X Men shows, and who who'd care? <laughs> right, yeah, like Disney, Disney could legitimately make a Marvel TV show that has the Marvel, like you know, more of the known characters, yeah, and do what uh, WB does, and just have a different. Have a TV Iron Man and a movie Iron Man, or whatever. If they if they really wanted to, I don't think they will. I, uh, I they would. I don't think they'd do that. But they could have like, here is the Moon Knight TV show, and then here is the, uh, like X Factor TV show, and here is the, you know, thousand different other, like C list Mar, you know, Marvel comics. You know, they're all getting TV shows now. <laughs> Yeah, and they're also going to have a Star Wars TV show, live action. So, here's my theory: it's going to take place between the time of Episode Three and Episode Four. <laughs> yeah, like every other Star Wars thing. I was actually talking about that earlier today with a friend of mine. Like, that is like why I liked Kotor so much. Like, Knights of the Old Republic is that. So that game took place literally like thousands of years before, like what we know as Star Wars. That's why I liked it because they had such like creativity and they could do whatever they wanted. They're not they weren't constrained to this like fifteen year time frame that every other fucking Star Wars thing is t- like tied into now. Like I don't care about the backstory of Han Solo. <laughs> right. Yeah. Even Rogue yeah. One, like. It, it was okay, but I didn't, like, how they got the plans is not, like, the most pivotal in, piece of information I needed to see, and they didn't need to make a two-hour movie based on it. <laughs> I still need to watch that at some point. I have not. Like, what, what, 
what what's the next one going to be like? How Chewie got his groove back or something, or like how, how he grew up? Could you like, imagine? I mean, we're, just a bunch of Chewbaccas there dancing or whatever. That, that was a ho- you ever saw, ever see the holiday special from like twenty like thirty no, years I have ago? Not. I always like, need to go watch that, and I don't. Like one of like the characters are like stinky, and like that that is literally like one of the characters' names is stinky. It's like all right. Although that that uh that thing introduces the best Star Wars character ever. What is that? Or who's? A lot of people are gonna say it's uh Boba Fett. Right. They're wrong. It's B. Arthur. <laughs> she is she is in that thing as like a lounge singer, as like a bar owner slash lounge singer, and it is sublime. That's what we needed. Uh, yep. If they can CGI uh, Carrie Fisher, they can CGI B. Arthur. <laughs> so I think this is inevitable. So this didn't surprise me at all when I heard it, but that there's going to be a new Star Wars trilogy. I mean, it's not like Disney's going to stop making Star Wars films, right? It's, it's the same thing. Like, there's it doesn't matter how many – until the Marvel films prove that they don't make any more money and Thor Ragnarok's already, uh, you know, at number one and making more money than Doctor Strange and, and like, even the other Thor, uh, the second Thor and – and even um, the first one, it, for, yeah, it made more sure. money than Spider-Man: Homecoming uh, in the in its opening weekend. So, yeah, and until those, they're gonna be, they're gonna continue to make Marvel movies until they prove not to make any money. So, uh, why not do the same thing with Star Wars? Uh, said, I hope that the Last Jedi is good, so we can have confidence in Ryan Johnson. Heading up an entire trilogy, but we'll see when that happens in a month. Well, I mean, he's made good movies in the past, also, so I have, I have faith in him. I, I have less faith in like how Disney is going to fuck it up, considering like the last two Star Wars films have had major problems, or three really. Well, J.J. Abrams basically has made a New Hope clone. So, yeah, I, I mean that that's that's fine, but like Rogue One had severe issues, uh, like when they were making it. You can tell from the trailers, right? And then and then the Han Solo film sounds like a disaster through and through. I'm not really even that excited for that either. So no, I mean they fired the directors like 85 percent of the way through. It's like that that doesn't inspire confidence. <laughs> no. Uh, not at all. Uh, so, I mean, that's cool that they're continuing on with this. I'm sure that there will be more Star Wars uh, stuff uh, on down the line whenever that service actually starts up. The, uh, the Oh, we forgot to talk about this last week, but they've officially now made this. Uh, it's been actually put out there. It officially does start uh, next week. Uh, but GameStop has rolled out their... It's now a, you can rent any used game you want. You pay $60, a one-time fee for a year, and you can basically use it like Gamefly, but you go to the store. Uh, I've heard a lot of people be positive about it. I mean, I don't know how there's really any negatives to it, honestly. it's You pay the price of one new game for to get whatever game you want. Uh, I think... I just think this is not going to not going to work as great as they think it does. Um, I know I know you can go online and check to see what they have in the store, which avoids you from having to waste your time. But I don't know. Well, I feel like people are going to go in there looking for all the new stuff, and that also requires people to go in and trade in those games. Yeah, well, a lot of people do trade in their games. Like, you know, once they beat it, they're just like, you know, what, what, what do they need this for? My, like, the one thing you mentioned on Facebook was, like, what happens, like, if, if people just keep games out forever? <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, it's true, yeah. What if they just keep them out for a month at a time, 
which they can do, obviously, uh, because you have the incentive of whatever game you keep at the end of that six months, that's yours. So yeah. it, it's not like Gamefly where they eventually just keep lowering the price and lowering the price, lowering the price, and then you can just eventually just buy it for like $15 or something. This is, yeah. okay, whenever that six months ends, whatever game you have at that moment, that's that's it's yours. So And they don't seem to have a limit as to like how long you had to have it before it becomes yours. So, uh, and you know. The, like the thing you mentioned is also like how, this is going to affect in-game stock. Like not so much new games. Like that's I mean that will affect that too. But like what happens if you roll in to a GameStop and say I want this game and they're like oh it's, all all of our copies are rented out. It's like okay well. But I want to buy Am- it. There's Amazon. I mean like <laughs> yeah. I mean yeah. I mean that's the thing too, right? It's like if you do have that person coming in looking for those, those games and they do want to buy them. I guess there's always the option of buying it new, but which doesn't help GameStop at all because, uh, and also GameStop has pretty, has a pretty small like new section compared to used. <laughs> well, yeah, because they want you to buy used for everything because they, yeah, they get more money out of it. Yeah. So and not too much of this is absolutely killing the developers and publishers. Um, because they get no money out of this rental thing. Uh, they get no money out of the used games that are bought. So Yeah, but now, now they get money from the loot boxes they sell. So, win-win. <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. They get money out of the loot boxes they sell. But uh, this, this doesn't... Uh, you don't get to do anything with their digital. Like, you can't go on GameStop.com and reserve like you would at the red box and then pick it up. You can't, uh, you can't, uh, rent from the digital store. Like you would a game fly and had them send it to you. You have to go to the store. So like I have two game stops that are in relative proximity to me. And then I have one that's by my job. So, which I'm not going to have in about less than a month. So like the, I would probably be able to find the game that I wanted, but that also requires me to p- go to the store various times. So, yeah, but I think I think that's their hook is they want you to, right. they want to hook people in, into the store so, so they can rent this game, but then you can also buy this, you know, Mega Man Blaster or you know this uh, Funko Pop or, or something pre-order like that. Pre-order five of these games or yeah. You know. Like I don't know about the I don't know about the game stops by you, but the ones by me, like they barely sell games anymore. <laughs> like, it's more of a thing. Oh no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, I I've walked in there. This is why I try not to go with Anaya because she'll try to get me to get her another Pokemon plushie when yeah. I go in there, and I'm like, no, these are fifteen dollars a pop. I don't want to. They have Funko toys all over the place, you know. Oh like, yeah, yeah. So. Most of it is not games. It's like half games and half of it thinking stuff. So, I was, what threw me was I was at a Barnes and Noble about about two months ago. Yeah. They had Funko Pops there, and like in the middle aisle was toys, not learning toys, just toys. And I'm like, wow, you guys real really desperate, aren't you? <laughs> Well, you kind of got to do what you can, right? It's not like people are just going out there buying books really anymore. Like, so. they, they were literally selling, like, this Power Rangers legacy helmet thing for $100. And it's Oof. like, all right. You going to buy that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can see a lot of people using this. We'll see how it works, right? I think... Once people start figuring out that, you know, those new games, that's going to happen. Like, you're going to get that one person that that beats the game in a week and they turn it in. You're going to get that first person that comes and gets it. It's not going to be – there's not going to be ten copies of uh, Battlefront 2 there no. for you to rent out. So, you know, people need to get – understand that, that, you know, you might want to have, like – a list of five games before you go in the store and start checking off the ones that are there and, and are not. So, 
I would say uh, like five old games too. Like, yeah, I would say like, like at least from earlier in the year and from last year even. Like, look her copies yeah. of like Final Fantasy fifteen or something. Not yeah, not Call of Duty World War Two. <laughs> Right, you got to remember that, like, you know, this would exclude indies pretty much uh, unless they had a retail version. So, you know, Cuphead wouldn't be there and stuff like that. Um, if yeah. you're saying that, well, all the big games that I wanted are gone. And so uh, I, I still think it'll wind up being a good deal for them, and I'm sure it'll work. Uh, just, it'll finally it seems like a last-ditch effort, though, <laughs> for me. Like... This is really the last thing they can honestly do. Well, it reminds me. It reminds me kind of a best, or not Best Buy, but a Blockbuster's no more late right. fees thing. Oh yeah, if they did towards the end, so that yeah, you know, you would keep going back. Yeah. And then they had the the Blockbuster. They had that same thing like Netflix, but it was like yeah, so was- overpriced. And they, they, they just hopped on, like, way too late also. Yeah. I actually had that for a while because you could go into the Blockbuster yeah. and get stuff. But then I realized how much more expensive it was than Netflix, and I was like, jeez, oh, I'm paying way too much money for this. Well, there's um, always a great story that Blockbuster had the chance to buy Netflix, and they passed on it. <laughs> yep. That too. And when Netflix did gains for a little bit. Yeah. And that died very, very quickly. Uh, so speaking of games, this week coming up is one of the biggest weeks for not in the re-releases like, October 27th <laughs> where it's just three massive games. This is more like the sheer amount of games uh, coming out in one week that actually have some sort of cachet. And yes, many of them are re-releases. Uh, Rhyme coming to the Switch, L.A. Noir Remaster coming to Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. This is on November 14th, by the way, so on Tuesday. Uh, and Bioshock, the 10th anniversary. Didn't we just come out with a Bioshock collection? Yeah, this has like one, I think like one extra thing in it or something. Like really stupid. Just keep re-releasing this game. Okay. Uh, the Blob, Rocket League for the Switch, which I'm sort of interested in because I might actually play it on the Switch instead of on the PS4. Even though I didn't pay for it, I was on PS Plus or PS4. A Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Uh, are you wanting that? I know you like to play all the Lego. I mean, I would try it, but I'm not, like, chomping at the bit. <laughs> Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, Elder Scrolls V, the Skyrim for Switch, Star Wars Battlefront 2, that's the big game, and Sims 4 coming to console. Uh, yeah. As well. That Bioshock thing is $200, by the way. <laughs> Holy crap, why? Uh, it comes with it comes with the collection, or, you know, it came out a few years ago, uh, Certificate of Authenticity, and then a uh, 11 inch statue of a big daddy that lights up and the drill moves. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, about that. I want that instead. No. <laughs> uh, the Batman, the first one, comes to Switch, the Telltale. Yeah. Uh, Pinball FX3. Have fun. <laughs> and then Justice 2 comes on a PC. So that should be cool. <laughs> I'm guessing that we'll have all the DLC from. Oh, uh, most of it, because not all is out yet on, on console. So. Well, yeah, not the the one that has the turtles and. Yeah. All that. So yeah, I'm sure they will have a. I think they already announced right a game of the year edition. Maybe. Mistaken. So. Probably. <laughs> yeah. So that that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed what you heard here. And if you did, hit that subscribe button, Video Games to the Max. If you liked it even more, you can hit us up on iTunes for a review or Stitcher or wherever else you listen to, YouTube. You leave comments there. You can hit subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You get all of our podcasts on the WTM Network. Uh, you get uh, the 
guys at Backlog Busting have allowed us to just release all their shows from 1 to 37. So every day you should get one of those, them reviewing older games. Uh, you know, we talked about the newer stuff. They talked about the older stuff. It did end. And then they did that top 100. It did not end either. <laughs> And so yeah, I think I think I was the last one, last member of that one, and then <laughs> like a week later, it was done. And I was like, "All right." <laughs> Sadness. I, I didn't even know if my episode came out. <laughs> I think I have that somewhere that I gotta put on the the feed, and I I, I think Wes forgot to like set me the actual deal. But yeah, we'll be back next week. Um, Daniel is the one that's going to be buying Battlefront 2, so I'm going to see if maybe I can get him on uh, for that to talk about it, because uh, I'm not. I'm not. That. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I the next game I'm buying is Xenoblade 2, and then I'm done for a while. So, uh, yeah, well, we'll, soon we'll be talking about Game of the Year stuff. So, And that's going to be very difficult, because this was an incredible year for games. So many great games. Uh, to talk about. I know for Mark, some of the ones that we thought were going to be better towards the end of the year were not. So um, this is going to be an interesting one when we talk about all that. But yeah, until next week, we'll see you later, everybody. Later.